everyone. Thank you for joining us on Love Your Life Canada. Today I have I'm Natasha Fregali, an educator, an entrepreneur, and a community-minded individual. Natasha, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So tell us more about you here, yourself and your business ventures. Um, so I am a venture partner in um, housing. And by day, I'm an educator with the public school board. And our our business is actually housing. So we're in housing. And I started it in 2015. I had taken a loan from my mom. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used that to buy my first property. And then from that, I uh, did some researching. And I sold that when the market was really good. And then I just continue to grow from there and I, I do it with my business partner and uh, we are definitely growing from here. Why did you decide to help out the Windsor community with all your stuff that you do? You know what, I, I think that Windsor is a really great city and it has a lot to offer and at times there's a, a negative lens towards things that may not be moving as quickly as say other cities or developments that other cities might have that we don't have. Mm -hmm. However, for the size and velocity of our city and for the population, I think that we have so much to offer and there's so much room to grow and that's the beauty of it. It's like being in New York before New York was something, was fully developed. There's so much room and so much development that can happen and that is happening that I, I really feel that we're really in a pivotal time in the city. Now I know you are a director for the Multicultural Council. How do you become a director? Well, I'm, I sit on the board of directors actually, so uh, nothing you just apply and I did a program called um, Diversity on Board and from that I then applied as well to sit on the board of directors for the MCC and I, uh, I, I love it. I've been there for a few years and I love it and it's a, a, it's a community minded group and it really um, sticks true to my heart because you know my father is an immigrant to Canada and I have family members who are immigrants to Canada and I love the mission and vision of the MCC. All right, what's, what do you feel like is the most rewarding part of working with the MCC? I think it's just being involved with the community. All right. Can you go into some more of your volunteer work in philanthropy? Yeah, so in 2017, when I moved back to Canada from the Middle East, I, um, I was really, really, you know, in a place where I thought, I really want to get back to the community. I had noticed that uh, when I came back, I wanted to get back into doing that because prior to moving internationally, I was sitting on a bunch of boards, as a safety village, etc. And of course, living overseas, that had, I had, that had stopped. So when I came back, I decided that I wanted to get more involved. And you know, I had this box of lip balms at home that I was going to use for something else with a girlfriend in Toronto. And we were there, and I thought, you know what? What am I going to do with these? And I thought, why don't we just start selling them? And whatever profits we get back, we'll put right back into the community. So that's what we did. Now I'm a little bit moving away from it, only because when you know when your business starts to take off, you you really have to focus and 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 focus on on what you're doing and, and make that your primary your primary objective. But I just think it's always very important. And so now what we're going to do is through our business, we're going to then you know be involved with the community and and donate and sponsor activities and events much like this uh, through the business so the lens is the same it's just under a different umbrella I wish I brought some of those lip balms with me because I have like four of them at home do you? Oh, yeah amazing. I really love the hum just because what do you use for the oils? Because it smells like vanilla or cinnamon. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know what? It's not me. I, um, I, I have them made internationally, and uh, they're all full organic, and um, they they come from across the border, and uh, they use all of the fully organic ingredients in them, and everybody loves them. Actually, ironically enough, it's interesting, you know. If you can have that as like one of your to go things whenever someone leaves yeah, real estate. Yeah, I think that's what I want to do is for, you know, maybe just to, because the lip balms, people like them so much. I think maybe just, you know, change the labeling 
and make it you know something to give away because we give donations to different things um, from the business just sort of change the packaging right speaking about the business yes why did you get started in real estate that's an interesting question. In 2015, I had a really life-changing moment, and I knew at that more time that I needed to shift um, the trajectory of my life, and so I decided then that in 2015 that I would need to get into something that was more me, that belonged to me, that was mine, and that couldn't be taken away from me. Of course, as long as I did business correctly. But I knew that I needed something that belonged to me, that was mine, that was holistic to me. And so that made me start, and I had an excellent mentor at that time, and the mentor really sort of segued me and helped me to to get into it and I still have tons of mentors in real estate I you can't being a real estate investor is very difficult and you, you know they, you really can't make mistakes because mistakes cost money and sometimes a lot of money now that you've been in the market for roughly four four and a half years at this point how have you seen the Windsor and Essex market change over those years oh my goodness in 2015 the house I bought, I was peanuts, like nothing, and I could negotiate the deal, and I got it for less. Um, you know, on my realtor actually it wasn't me. Uh, I shouldn't, I shouldn't take the credit for that. And now, you know, coming back in 2017 from working internationally until now in 2019, I've just seen it go up and up and up. And we are, we are in a housing crisis. And we will continue to continue to be. I attended a conference last year in Toronto, and it said that there's a shortage of around thirty thousand doors in Toronto alone, and that will spill into you know that golden horseshoe will spill into other cities, and those cities will spill down all the way down to Windsor. So I don't see me personally. I don't really see it going down. It might stabilize, but I definitely don't see the market going backwards. Okay, would you say that the housing crisis would be one of the biggest challenges that Windsor faces at this time, or are there other challenges as well? You know, I think every city has its own challenges, and I think that as they come up, the, the city deals with them in, a, in an effective way. I, I think that as issues come up and as issues rise, they're dealt with. It's hard to project. That would only be speculatory. I know that there definitely is an issue with housing at this time, but you know, I'm sure that everyone involved is working diligently to, to solve that problem. You're definitely right about how oh, that hit. What do you believe Windsor needs more of then? Oh, I think a positive atmosphere, positive outlook. I think we need to really start looking um, positively because we set the tone for the next generation. And working in education, I know that there's definitely the mindset piece. And I think that the mindset piece in Windsor is really important because when you have that positive mindset, you can set the tone for others. And it, it really is uplifting. So there might be a housing crisis, there might be flooding, there might be break-ins, and Lord knows that I do have dealt with all of those in my business and many times over. However, you need to have a positive outlook because without that, it will change. And even me, I can get very negative at times about things. But when that happens, you know, get back on the positive train. All right. Well, thank you for coming yeah, on to the show, Natasha. Me. Where can people you. find you? Thanks for having me. Um, all my social media handles are the same. It's at N E Fagali, F E G H A L I. I always spell out my last name. Uh, or Natasha Fagali, and that's all my social media handles and my website. And our business is Fagali Group, uh, and at Fagali Group Inc. So F E G H A L I. Group G R O U P I N C. That's the teacher in me. Uh, Fagali Group Inc. And you can find us online. All right. Well, again, thank you for coming on today.